So go on, go on believing, my son. I will strengthen you. I love you. Call on me, call on me, and I will help you overcome. Overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. You take your Bibles and turn to the book of Ephesians tonight, chapter 2. I had planned on finishing out my series entitled The Decline of a Nation, but kept getting jerked back into something else. So, after a while you realize that you get interrupted by God, and you better go that direction. You're going to have a big rope neck around your neck, rope mark. So what I wanted to share with you tonight, I've entitled, The Value of a Soul. The Value of a Soul of a Person. The word value means to consider with respect to worth, excellence, usefulness, or importance. You value something, it's to regard or to esteem it highly. What is the value of a soul, of a person, of a child, of a man or a woman? It depends on who you ask. You're in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 10, the Bible says, For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The New Jerusalem translates the beginning of the verse as King James says, We are his workmanship. The New Jerusalem says, We are God's work of art. We are God's work of art. The New Living says, we are God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece. That's God's opinion of you. That you are God's masterpiece. You are his work of art. And don't ever let anybody tell you anything different. There are great artists in the world. And we have had great artists throughout history. And they produce great masterpieces. There's a picture called Salvador Mundi. It was painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the early 1500s. And it is said to be valued at over $500 million for one picture in today's market. In November of 2017, it was sold for 450300000 which included the commission through the auction house Christie's in New York. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Da Vinci's Mona Lisa is the highest picture ever insured, the highest value for a picture that's ever been insured. I guess it's Lloyd's of London would have to ensure that picture. It's on permanent display at Lourdes in Paris, and the Mona Lisa was assessed at $100 million on December 14, 1962. Taking inflation into account, the 1962 value today would be around $900 million, and that is of the year 2021. $900 million. It's a lot of money. Somebody named Vincent Van Gogh put a bunch of flowers, sunflowers, in a vase. They're called the vase with 15 sunflowers. That's the name of the picture. And it sold for $24,750,000 in March of 87. And in today's market, again, based on 21 
is where this information came from, 2021. It's worth over $74 million. And these are just works of man. And art enthusiasts from all parts of the globe, they prepare for years to acquire such masterpieces just so they can hang them on the wall and say, look at my masterpiece. And when God says in Ephesians that you're his masterpiece, nobody gets excited. They have some of these big art exhibits. They got oodles and oodles, thousands of people that travel from all over the globe. Movie stars, political people, presidents, heads of states. They come in, they have a big meal, they have music, they make a big ado, and they all come to look at a picture on the wall. And God says that you are his masterpiece. And yet these men are imperfect that created, that painted these masterpieces. You are valuable to God. You are valuable to God. And because we're valuable to God, that means we're valuable to each other. We show this to one another when we walk in love towards one another. When we respect God. Let me put it a different way. One of the ways we can walk in God's love is by valuing others, especially within the church. When you value someone, you're showing God's love towards that person. You're saying to them, you are of value to me because you are God's masterpiece. You are valuable. Now, most people take care of the things they value, right? If you truly value something and, and you don't throw it out and just abuse it or mistreat it, most people take care of the things they value. And when we value people, you know what that means? That we should take care of each other. And we should manifest that towards one another. One of the easiest ways to do that is to walk in love towards one another. You don't abuse people. You don't handle their hearts cruelly. Or treat them like trash. Or talk to them disrespectfully. Do you do that when you value something? No. Why? Because you're born again. You're God's masterpiece. And the problem is you got the world whispering in one end of your head telling you this is what we think. And then God tells you you're his masterpiece. Would you go up to the Mona Lisa, grab it off the wall, and throw it on the ground? People would kill you. Right? You don't do that. You know why? Because it's valuable and you should value that. Or any other work of art. You wouldn't walk into someone's house and pick up their vase and throw it on the ground. No, why? Because you respect them. You value that. And you show that you value that by the way you treat it. Look again at Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Or as the New Living says, we are his masterpiece. Remember that? Show I, sh uh, I showed you last Thursday night. Your picture is on God's refrigerator. That's where he displays you. Because you're valuable to him. And what makes you that masterpiece is what the scripture says. Created in Christ Jesus. You have Christ in you. Okay? So if you're God's masterpiece, as the word teaches... And you have Christ in you. When we look at one another, when we interact with one another, we should value what God says and we should value the Christ in a person. And if you do that and think spiritually and walk spiritually towards a brother or a sister, you love them. You see, how someone treats you is proportional to the value that they place on you. 
And the value that they place on you will be proportional to the value and respect that they have for your father God and his testimony regarding you. If God says you're his masterpiece, that's what the word says. That's what the word means. Do you disrespect God's masterpiece? Do you treat God's masterpiece with disdain and dishonor it? No, you would never do that. Would you go into heaven right now and take one of the portraits that God ha hanging on his wall, so to speak, and just say, that don't belong, that's ugly. Why the angel grabs you by your neck and takes you out of the courtroom? You don't do that. You are God's masterpiece. You're valuable. You remember I told you that the word value means to, to consider the respect of the worth or excellence of something, the usefulness of something, or the importance of something, and to esteem that highly. But there's another definition of the word value. And that definition says value is to estimate or assign a monetary worth to something. In other words, the value of something is reflected by its price tag. That's how valuable it is. Those, the Mona Lisa in today's market, probably a, a billion dollars. See? Or the 15 sunflowers, probably a hundred million. Who knows? That's the price tag. Go to 1 Corinthians, please, chapter 6. Value is to estimate or assign the monetary worth of something, to put a price on it. In 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, in verse 20, it says, For you are bought with a price. You're bought with a price. You cost God something. He purchased you. You cost him something, okay? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are who? God. God. You belong to God. Amen. You see? And that which you do and that which you say and how you act and how you interact should bring glory to God. You should glorify God in your body and in your spirit because they are God's. He bought you, okay? Now that he bought you, you're redeemed. You no longer belong to the world or the ways or the things of the world. You belong to God. You're his masterpiece. So you should act in light of that. You should act accordingly. You belong to God, not the world. And the way that you can show that you belong to God is that you should walk in God's love. It's one of the ways you can show that you belong to God. Therefore, honor God with your body. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20, the new international version the NIV reads this way you were bought with a price therefore honor God with your body the things that you do you should bring honor to God the way you act should bring honor to God you are no longer a slave to the desires and whims and fads of this world you were bought with a price. You belong to God. And our walk and our actions should glorify God. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Verse 23. You are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of what? Amen. You don't belong to the world anymore. You don't have to serve men anymore. Who should you be serving? God. God. Why? Sure. Because he bought you. He paid a price for you. Now you got a decision to make. Who are you going to serve? 
Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve man? You belong to God. You don't belong to the world. And God deserves your best. God shouldn't get the leftovers where you can squeeze them in here or there for a moment. Okay? And if you're living like that, it's because you still belong to the world and you're still serving men. You don't see the big picture. You don't realize you're God's masterpiece. You don't realize that each other person that's born again is God's masterpiece. You don't realize you were bought with a price. And you're still serving man to please man. That's where you used to be. That's not where you should be now. God deserves your best. First Corinthians says that we're bought with a price. Go to First Peter. Chapter 1. And I'm going to show you the price that God paid for you. And remember, value in this context is assigning a monetary worth to something. In other words, a price that was paid for something. That's how valuable it is. 1 Peter 1.18 For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of what? Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's what God paid for you. He gave his only begotten son. And it was the blood of Jesus Christ that he paid. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says this, Take heed unto yourselves and unto all the flock over to which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. The Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Okay. This boils down to Loving God and loving people with the love of God. That's how you value one another. When you interact with a person and you aren't walking with the love of God, you don't realize that you're dealing with God's masterpiece, you don't realize that you're dealing with someone that has Christ in them, see, you've lost the value of a person. And you show dishonor to God and disrespect to God. Because you would not disrespect God's masterpiece, would you? Yeah. Well, that's what we do when we disrespect one another. Or the things of God. When you're walking spiritually with the love of God, your words and actions will show that you value a person as a brother or a sister in Christ. Galatians 6, verse 10 says, As we therefore have opportunity... Let us do good unto all men. Then it goes on and it says, but especially unto those who are of the household of what? Of faith. Right? We're supposed to be good and do good unto all, but we especially take care of the saints. We especially take care of the brethren. Why? Because they're God's masterpiece. And we respect God. So we treat his masterpiece with respect. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. See, the problem with people is they got one foot in the word and the other foot in the world. But you don't belong in the world anymore because God bought you. He purchased you with a price, with the life of his son, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Philippians 2. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than what? Themselves. You know, a good question to ask you know, sometimes we, we go different places. 
And sometimes the girl in the phone who's directing us gets a little confused. <laughs> so we have to check our direction. Are we going the right way? Well, a good way to check, to make sure that you're going the right way with God, is to ask yourself this question. Why am I doing this? See? That's a good question to ask. Why do I do the things I'm doing? Why am I doing this? The Bible says in Philippians, don't do anything through strife or vainglory. Are you doing this because you want glory? And you know what kind of glory it is? It's vainglory. Are you doing this because you want to cause a problem for somebody? Strife? You want to make things worse for somebody? In other words, what's your motive of heart? Because God doesn't look on the outward appearance of man. God looks upon what? The heart. So why are you doing the things you're doing? That's a good question. And the answer sometimes is sobering. Now, if you're lined up with the Word, that's wonderful. If you're not, just change. It's not a big deal. It's a big deal if you say dumb and continue to devalue God and devalue the things of God. 1 Peter chapter 5. Here's an example of how we can value one another in our walk and in our actions. Verse 5, 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the what? The elder. It's talking about in the church. People have been around for a while. People who have proved their worth. Pre people who have stood faithfully for years and years. They're elders in the church. And the, the younger should respect that. And not only respect it, they should value them as an elder and they should submit unto them because that's what the word says. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. Be humble. Why? For your own good, that's why. Because the rest of the verse says, for God, what? Resisteth the proud, but he gives grace unto the what? So you want to arm wrestle with God or do you want his grace? He resists the proud. You can't win. Bible says in the Old Testament, that Proverbs, Psalms, that pride goes before what? A destruction. Pride goes before a fall, right? Six, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you now, yesterday. What? In due, in due time. In due time. It's not your schedule. It's not your time clock. Guess what? It's God's. And when you humble yourself, God will exalt you in His time clock. But you know what happens sometimes? We get all full of whatever, and we want things when we want things. Well, did you ever think to stop and ask God that if this is what he wants and is if this is the time? Okay. Well, it's just backwards to what the world says. You understand? You humble yourself, God exalts you. In the world, you exalt yourself. You're out there leading, you're doing this, and then the world exalts you. That's not, way it, that's not the way it works. And you can't take that attitude and bring it to the Word and expect it to work. Because I'll show you what happens. Luke chapter 4. Just the opposite happens. Luke 14. Luke 14, verse 10. For whosoever exalted himself shall be what? Abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be what? exalted see that's the way it works with God but we're never taught that in the world because the world doesn't run that way the world runs the opposite way you can't take the world and come to the word and expect to have the results of God's word when you act according to the world you can't do it 
You got to give up the one because the Bible says whosoever shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of who? Sure it is. There's a story told and it's a well-known story about a young preacher over in Scotland. And this guy was studying in seminary and he wanted to be a minister. That's all he wanted to be. And the guy was sharp. He was a good orator. He had a good presence in front of people. And he began to study the word, go to church, and he was just waiting for his chance that he could preach the word of God. And one day, the invitation came. And he got invited to teach a sermon that next Sunday at his church. And he was all excited. And he was beaming with pride that he finally gets to teach his first sermon. That's something. So as he's going up to the pulpit full of self-confidence, and he was cool, walking like Fonzie with a little strut, a little swagger even perhaps, as he approached the altar, he got up in front of the people and he looked down in front of the people and he began to teach. And he started out great. But after about 10, 12 minutes into his sermon, he began to look at the people and he began to slip up on his words. And all of a sudden he got a little bit nervous. And he got a little bit more nervous. And then he forgot his sermon. And he was rustling through his papers. And then it, it didn't even last to 15, 17 minutes. He was so embarrassed that he just hung his head and he walked off the pulpit, humiliated, humbled to the core, to the back of the church, and just sat down in a pew. And the old pastor came up, covered for him, finished at the service, and the people began to leave the church. But there was one little old woman, a saintly woman, that had been around for many, many, many years. And she hung back as everybody else exited the church. And so she walked down the aisle, and she saw the young preacher sitting there with his head in his hands, and she go, <clears throat> and she got his attention. And she said to him, if you went up the way you came down, you would have come down the way you went up. You know, because he went up, he was all her. But when he came down, he was... But what he didn't understand, that in order... To have God elevate you, you got to be what? Humble. You got to be humble, right? And he learned a lesson that day. And that young man went on to be a great preacher. And those words stood with him throughout his entire ministry. Proverbs 29, 23, the New King James says, A man's pride will bring him low but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Okay? The truly humble person yields himself to Christ to be his servant, to utilize his gifts that he has been given by God for the glory of God and for the good of others. And others is the key idea, especially in Philippians. When a believer's eyes are turned away from themselves and then focused on the needs of others, then they're beginning to learn a few things. Like in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than yourself. Than yourself. 
put the other guy first. It's not about you, who you are, what you want, what you need. You're going to minister. It's about who? It's about others. Did Jesus Christ always put the other guy first? Even when it wasn't convenient? Yes. Even when they were wrong? Was the church wrong for crucifying Jesus Christ at that time? Did he still die for them? Yes, he did. See? Then you start to learn a, a few things about how to be a godly servant. Not according to the world's standards. According to God's standards. Value each other and esteem each other higher than yourselves. And if you keep this in your heart, you will honor God and you will be a blessing to all you come in contact with. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. And thank you that we can value you by valuing each other and treating each other with your love as we walk in your love. Thank you, Father, that pride is not good in any shape or form. It's what caused the adversary to fall. So why should we even want to get near that stupid word? But that we could become humble servants to you, Father. Become broken bread for our brothers and our sisters. To esteem our brothers and our sisters better than ourselves. To submit and show respect and love one another. For that's how your word teaches us to walk in your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen? Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to Chapter and Verse Ministry. We have newsletters, articles, podcasts, and videos posted on our website at www.cvm.church. We also post videos regularly on Rumble and on BitChute. Don't forget to like our video and to hit the bell icon if you want to know when another video is coming out. Sometimes the days are long and hard Fill with sorrow, heartache and tears Broken hearted, feeling lonely inside Then God whispers, my son right by your side I'll never leave you lonely I'll be your friend I am with you right to the end so go on go on believing my son Call on me, call on me, and I will help you overcome, overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. up the hands which hang down or lame ones lift up those feeble knees make straight your paths to walk God is your shield or lame ones leap for joy let it rather be healed We are not of them who draw back No, we won't fold, no But we are who believe to the saving of the soul So go on, go on Believing my son I will strengthen you, I love you, 
call on me, call on me, I will help you overcome, overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ. Go on, go on, believing my son, I will strengthen you. I will help you overcome, overcome by the blood of Jesus Christ.